Ceruloplasmin is one of the most important proteins for optimal health and energy. But unfortunately, most people have never heard of this protein before. That's why in this video, I will explain what ceruloplasmin is, its roles in the body, and how you can naturally increase your ceruloplasmin levels through diet and supplements. Okay, first things first, what even is ceruloplasmin? What are we talking about here? Well, ceruloplasmin is a protein that is made in the liver. It binds primarily to copper and carries it from the liver to the bloodstream or basically anywhere that you need copper in the body. So what you have to understand is that ceruloplasmin is crucial for copper transport and copper metabolism. Next, it is also important for iron metabolism because it converts toxic ferrous iron to non-toxic ferric iron. You see, both copper and iron are double-edged swords because when they're bound to carrier proteins in the body and can be used correctly, they're essential for our health. But when they're free and unbound in the body and just lie in the tissue, they create oxidative stress. This irritates tissue and can cause inflammation. So when we analyze copper and iron in the body, we cannot just look at total levels, but we need to make sure that we understand, okay, has this person enough ceruloplasmin and other carrier proteins that can bind to copper and iron to make them bioavailable? This brings me to ceruloplasmin's role in the body. Like I said before, without it, copper and iron cannot be used properly by the body. Basically, they get stuck and create oxidative stress. That's why both copper and iron toxicity, which basically describes someone who has a very high level of unbound copper or iron, is so dangerous. I explain both conditions in more detail in other videos. But what you have to understand is that we primarily want to reduce this oxidative stress that they can cause. And one of the main ways of doing this is by optimizing your diet. So for example, you could take in more antioxidants such as vitamin C. You could boost your antioxidant production in the form of glutathione or you can increase your ceruloplasmin levels because like I said before, ceruloplasmin binds to copper and it also helps metabolize iron so they don't get stuck in tissue and are accessible to the body. So it really lowers the toxic potential of these metals and makes them healthy for us, makes them fulfill their role as essential nutrients. Okay, now that you know of the importance of ceruloplasmin, how do you increase your levels naturally? Unfortunately, there is no one-size-fits-all supplement that you can take. We have to rely on our body, give it the necessary cofactors for ceruloplasmin production, and elevate levels that way. The steps that I will now outline to increase your ceruloplasmin production are almost all based on the root cause protocol by Marley Robbins. I will link a review for you to watch if you want to learn more about the root cause protocol. There are things about it that I like and things about it that I don't like. Personally, I believe the best part of the root cause protocol is its focus on the relationship of copper and iron and also the role ceruloplasmin plays in all of this. He really lays out the steps of how to increase your ceruloplasmin levels naturally and I want to explain these steps now and also give my commentary on them. Okay, so what you have to understand is that we can look at ceruloplasmin from two different angles. First, the physiological angle. So that talks about where and how in your body ceruloplasmin is produced. Let's go over that one first. Basically, ceruloplasmin requires both a strong liver and strong adrenal function. Why? Well, because ceruloplasmin, so the protein itself, is produced in the liver. So a sluggish or underperforming liver will downregulate your ceruloplasmin production. So that's definitely one thing you need to look at is your liver health. Next, you also want to look at your adrenal function and make sure you have strong enough adrenals. That's because the signal that tells the liver to produce ceruloplasmin is sent by the adrenal glands. The adrenal glands sit atop each kidney and they're both about the size of a walnut and have the shape of a disc. If you suspect you have weak adrenal function, which many people do by the way, then I suggest you follow my steps on strengthening the adrenal glands that I outline in a different video. 
So that's the physiological angle. So to understand that ceruloplasmin is produced in the liver and the signal for the production is sent by the adrenal glands. So a misfunction of either organ will downregulate your ceruloplasmin production. Next, the nutritional point of view. What can we do in terms of diet and supplements to improve our ceruloplasmin levels naturally? In terms of nutrients that your body requires to properly produce ceruloplasmin, we first have bioavailable copper. Unfortunately, copper is a very complex and complicated topic, and I won't go into it now. I explain the topic in more detail in my video on how to take copper, so make sure to watch that first. Because to increase your bioavailable copper, please don't supplement copper directly. There are other ways of doing this, and supplementing copper, so taking a normal copper supplement, can be very dangerous, especially in high doses. Next, your body also requires preformed vitamin A, which is also known as retinol. For this, you have to know that there are two types of vitamin A. First, there's provitamin A, which is plant-based vitamin A, also known as beta-carotene. And then we have the animal-based retinol or preformed vitamin A. Only the preformed vitamin A, so retinol, can be used directly by the body. Beta-carotene has to be converted first, and this conversion doesn't always work correctly in many people. It's dependent on many things, one of them being your thyroid health. So people who only rely on plant-based vitamin A, so beta-carotene, often run into problems here, because if their body does not convert beta-carotene to retinol properly and in sufficient levels, they can consume all the beta-carotene in the world. It won't elevate their retinol levels. Great, now that you know these two critical nutrients for ceruloplasmin production, so one, bioavailable copper, and two, retinol, so preformed vitamin A, how do you get them from your diet? Like I said before, I don't recommend supplementing copper directly, and instead, I would recommend you go with a whole food vitamin C complex. And this can come from the acerola berry, for example, or kamu kamu. There are countless products out there that sell whole food vitamin C supplements. Just make sure you buy from a reputable brand because natural supplements that come from real foods are prone to pesticides, especially if they come from overseas. Molly Robbins, so the creator of the root cause protocol, also recommends that besides the whole food vitamin C complex, you also eat beef liver regularly. I personally am not a big fan of this recommendation because if you have copper toxicity, then these high copper foods can actually make the condition worse, not better. And lastly, a good source of preformed vitamin A is cod liver oil. Now, just like with the vitamin C supplement, you want to make sure to buy it from a reputable brand because as you probably know, fish oil and cod liver oils go rancid pretty quickly. So you want to make sure that the product you're buying is still good. Of course, if you're a vegan, you might run into problems with this type of product. So I suggest you either make an exception for cod liver oil because getting enough preformed vitamin A really is vital to your health and energy, or you supplement synthetic vitamin A in the form of retinol palmitate. It's not going to be as good as natural vitamin A from cod liver oil, but it's definitely better than nothing and definitely better than only relying on beta-carotene. Now, besides this nutritional support, there are also a few things you want to avoid for optimal ceruloplasmin production, because these things have been shown to lower your levels quite a bit. The first thing is that you want to avoid synthetic vitamin D supplements. The reason for this is that very high levels of synthetic vitamin D can crowd out vitamin A in the liver. Vitamin A and vitamin D are natural antagonists, so if one goes up, the other goes down. Now, if you only supplement vitamin D, and especially in very high doses, then over time you run the risk of lowering your vitamin A in your body. Like I said before, vitamin A is crucial for ceruloplasmin production. Now, cod liver oil also has some vitamin D, but first of all is natural vitamin D, which is different from synthetic vitamin D, and it's also in the natural combination with vitamin A. So you won't run into risks taking cod liver oils and getting your vitamin D that way. Same goes for sunbathing. Another problematic supplement are synthetic vitamin C supplements. 
So not natural ones, but synthetic ones that rely on ascorbic acid. Now, ascorbic acid is a very potent antioxidant, but unfortunately, it unbinds copper from ceruloplasmin, so the copper from its transport protein. This renders ceruloplasmin inactive, which also lowers your levels. So you want to avoid synthetic vitamin C and generally favor whole food vitamin C supplements. Third, you want to avoid iron supplements. Now, iron toxicity and the dangers of most iron supplements is a huge topic in and of itself, and I won't be able to go into it in this video. But generally, you want to avoid iron supplements, not just if you suffer from low ceruloplasmin levels, but as an average person. I explain why in a different video, but the essence is that your body probably has enough iron already, and you just need to make that iron bioavailable again, instead of consuming more and more biounavailable iron in the form of supplements. And the last thing you might want to consider avoiding are citric acid-based supplements. So, for example, magnesium citrate. The reason for this is that there are a few studies that have shown citric acid to also lower ceruloplasmin levels, but these studies are very old. And I myself personally cannot confirm this. So it really depends on the person, but it's just something that I wanted to note. Okay, to wrap up this video, which has become way too long already, let me give you a word of caution though. I showed you how to increase your ceruloplasmin levels naturally through diet and supplements, but please don't only focus on ceruloplasmin levels. I see this mistake a lot in people who follow the root cause protocol. It is very popular online, so it has thousands of people following it every day. Unfortunately, it makes elevating your ceruloplasmin levels almost its only focus. But this can be misleading. Not only because ceruloplasmin is an acute phase protein, so it goes up and down depending on whether you are sick or not, but also because I've seen people with copper toxicity and iron toxicity that had normal ceruloplasmin levels. So if you are familiar with the root cause protocol and want to elevate your ceruloplasmin levels because of that, this is just a word of caution. Always also keep an eye on your other nutrients and make sure you work with an experienced practitioner who knows what they're doing. 